Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. And we are here to talk about life as stay at home dad. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight, got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet, cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad, that's what I do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Welcome back to the Home Dad Chat. Man, <laughs> you're cracking me up already, Danny. Oh my god. Sorry, sorry. We're very professional here. Very professional. Oh, good. <clears throat> I am I'm not I'm not changing it. Oh man. Welcome, 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 everybody. Honestly, it's great that you came back to listen to another show. Uh we're definitely having uh just a fun fun day if things going on and just laughing about it. But anyway, uh, I got to ask, uh, Danny, uh, I'm not going to ask how your day was. I want to know, did you see who made it on national television today with a big like movie star talk show, daytime talk show host? Well, but you don't care how my day was today? What? We'll talk about that later. That hurts, man. All right. Okay. Was it, uh, was it the one and only man himself, Dante Palmer? It sure was from Squat for Change. Yes, yes, yes. I saw that. That was awesome. Oh my God. It yeah. was like, I know that guy. I know. It was so cool. I was like, dude, like he was our keynote speaker at Dad Con at home. That was so right. cool. I was telling my kids and they're like, What? Because I had two <laughs> kids that were that were homesick today and they were like, Dad, we're doing, you know, we get a nap or whatever they were doing. We're doing something over here. Why are we talking about some man that we've never met? I'm like, no, like come who, on. You're like, who's that guy? Him. <laughs> <laughs> who's he? I, mean, I know, I know her. I, I yeah. we've seen her before on TV. Or on the movies. Who's he? <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, I thought it was so cool. Uh, you know, yeah. one, I think it's neat that her show has uh, like the segment called Good Dad, which is really neat. Um, she's had Curtis uh, Weber Jr. from uh, Dad's Married to Doctors on there too. He was actually one of the very first uh, dads to be on that uh, segment. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, Dante on there for Squat for Change and getting to share his story. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, just his background. I mean, he, I believe he was a school teacher and then his family went out to eat one night and he went to go change his kid and there wasn't a changing table in the bathroom. And so he just squatted against the wall and like changed him and his older son, like snapped a picture of him and like they yeah. put it up on Instagram at one point just to see what reactions would be. And it went crazy freaking viral. <laughs> right. And now he's just a force for change uh, and, and a really motivational person. And honestly, somebody that likes to make you cry. That's what I think. That's what oh, yeah. Did. He gets deep, <laughs> man. Dad he home this deep. year. He goes quick. He went, it was straight. It was like, yeah, everything's good. And I, and I was really interested in his, you know, his career and what he's, where, how he got where he's doing and um, the passion that he has for, for what he's doing and all that. Yeah. And, and then he just like went straight into, hey. Well, here's the thing, and uh, who wants to cry? And I'm like, well, I want to cry, but I didn't want to cry, man. Yeah. So, uh, well, he was I mean, great. and he's been doing so much. I mean, like he started out, he was doing things with John Legend for a while there, and uh, and Chrissy Teague, oh, no, like, cool. yeah, because Chrissy Teague had like reached out to him uh, during the first set of the whole viral thing, and was like, yeah, man, we're behind you. And then uh, nice. P and G and John Legend got in with him, and they started yeah. putting changing tables up, and then on the show today, it was just really neat because Koala Care, which everybody knows who they are, if you've ever changed a diaper and right. had a changing table, uh, they basically said that they were going to donate a bunch of changing tables to him as well. And I know he currently is in a place where he's trying, if anybody knows of a location that does not have a changing table in the men's bathroom, um, he wants you to reach out to him and let him know where that location mm -hmm. is because he'll get them a changing table and, and they're not cheap. No, <laughs> they're really no. not. And I, I remember uh, going to a pizza place here in town and they didn't have one. And I was like, what's the deal? Like, I mean, I get it. You got a small bathroom or whatever, but like you can't put a changing table and their excuse was they're really expensive. And I was like, mm -hmm. I get it. To have only one in the women's bathroom yeah, and not where, one in the men's bathroom, where like do I change my child, yeah. Like, and I told the guy, I was holding my daughter at the time, and I'm like, listen, like I've I now have to go back tell my wife, and she's got to now go and change my daughter when I fully was gonna do it. Like, mm -hmm. it's frustrating. I was like, what if I didn't have that situation? And there are many dads like that, like that wouldn't have yeah. that situation, you know, wouldn't have that ability. And uh, 
the manager really had no, <laughs> they were, yeah. I mean, it was like throw up the hands there. And I think it was, uh, I think it was like a college student <laughs> type thing. Oh, no. So, yeah, I mean, not... they were just wide eyed and, you know, doe and headlights type of deal, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's cool that he's, uh, trying to just really change the world, uh, for change. I mean, he's changed legislation in some cities. I mean, New York city mm-hmm. had basically made it a law that the bathrooms have to have changing tables in them, which is really cool it's awesome yeah i can't tell you how many times i've because you definitely you, I mean, where do you put your kid there's just nowhere to go and you definitely you're not gonna put them on the floor i mean you're just not and most of the time we ended up I, I i didn't really ever do it in a restaurant because i was never in a restaurant like with my wife and needed it changed it was more of a hey we're gonna stop at the play place or whatever and get a you know some chicken nuggets or whatever <laughs> and um and i'm like mm, okay we're gonna go out to the car and I've done it, you know, like on the front seat of my car, even at, at church, even because they didn't have one originally. And I do the front seat of the car, fully dressed in my Sunday best and not get a spot on me. And that was a that was a sense of pride, man. <laughs> but it would have been so much easier because they have one now, actually, the church and the and the uh, the two restaurants we used to the fast food places we used to go to. They all have them now. Yeah. Uh, not thanks to me. I never said anything. I just like, well, OK, they don't have one. Um, but I love that he's doing it and it's such a very impactful thing, Yeah, especially to move a company like Koala to, to do anything. It's very impressive. Really, really kudos for him and everything he's done. No, it's, it's great. And, uh, honestly, I'm hoping that we get him back again for home dad con this year in Cincinnati. Um, it's, it's been put, it's been put out there. Uh, he had mentioned it, uh, during like everything with dad con at home. So, Hopefully it all works out and we get to see him because uh, he he was so motivative and just so mm-hmm. inspirational. Um, so we'll see how it all plays out. But um, yeah, I just I love talking about what he's doing. He's got some really cool stuff and uh, he, he deserves all the <laughs> all the accolades that he's getting right now. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. So. Such a humble guy about it, too. It's yeah, definitely. Just, just impressive. So. Think you could, do you think you could geek out about diaper tables? <laughs> Well, could I? Yeah, because I'm I'm just I'm just like a golden retriever. I love anything you love. I love it so much. How much do you love it? I love it more than that. I love it more than you. I could love everything. So yes, I could. Uh, and I honestly, I'm not sure with with Dante. He was because the thing is too is he was so very professional. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was he could have been just a public speaker that we had hired to speak about a subject as opposed to uh, a dad that just has a passion. It was amazing. You know, he was just very, very uh, his verbiage was great. You know, his intonation was great. Everything he said really had an effect. Yeah. You know, I love that. Um, but uh, but I'm sure he could geek out about it. I, I imagine wow. he probably could. Yeah. Who knows what <laughs> what all he, he could get involved with with it for sure. But, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. as far as geeking out. Uh, we've, we've been geeking out over all these different topics for, you know, setting up some, some yeah. cool shows with, yeah. you know, different, different dads and their passions for all kinds of fun stuff. Um, mm-hmm. what would, yeah, what excited. would you, what would you say out of all the ones that we have lined up is like, what would say your like t- your top two would be you have like two well. favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I still haven't uh, finalized my, my, uh, my list of the the dads that I would like to on this one, because I want this one. Um, but, uh, gaming, gaming is uh, huge for me, uh, like tabletop games, board games, big, huge, uh, long-term Dungeons and Dragons player. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, yeah, can I, and, and I, and we were originally talking about, listen, what subjects can we geek out about? And I don't know that I necessarily announced gaming, but I might've just slipped it in there. And when you said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I was like, yes. Oh, this is mine. Well, my thing was though, is I was thinking about video games, not board games. Cause that's sure the- video games too. Yeah. Let's do it. So we can yeah. have a couple segments on that. We could do a board game segment and a video game segment. Sure. Sure. How long do you want me to talk? Oh, you want somebody else? You want to, oh, we want to like a guest. We we need some other people with that. (laughs) Just me on a diatribe for 75 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I'll like, I'll be like, what about the dice? What? And I, I never, I've I've not gotten into dungeons. I love board games. um, Mm -hmm. Definitely. But I I feel like I'm very uh, intermediate when it comes to what I'm involved with, with board games, Um, you know, ticket the ride and um, some other fun stuff like that, that, you know, things that we can get the kids involved in. We try not to go mm-hmm. too heavy level. I like Catan. Um, that's mm-hmm. one I'll get together with some of the guys and we'll just drink beer and play Catan. And that's a lot yeah. of fun. 
It is nothing like nothing like trying like was it two two bricks for a for a wood? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, but I'm really excited about gaming. And then I think after that, really, um, and we should probably list them out for everybody because I know we have the list. But uh, um, that's okay. We'll do that so later. My my other one, it's honestly it's either gardening or cars or oh. photography. Okay. I don't know. You get a it's, three-way it's not split sports for a and it's not beer because I'm not, those are not my things. I am less okay. into sports or beer than you are into <laughs> gaming. Just going <laughs> to throw it out there. So, uh, so it's kind of a, a an act, but you know, but uh, what about, I'm, I want, I want to talk about all of them. So I'm going to stop because we don't talk about them. <laughs> so what about you? What, uh, what would you say your top two are? Uh, so sports I'm actually going to, I'm going to throw in one other one that we didn't talk about. Cause I just thought of this and with being on TikTok recently, I've run into a lot of cool guys uh, with mm -hmm. this, but I want to get some guys to talk about bourbon. Um, and so, because sure. if there's mm -hmm. something that like, I love bourbon, I love talking about the history of it and how it's made. And then the same thing for beer, like there's such a history mm -hmm. and, you know, just so many different styles of how it's made. So bourbon and beer, really cool. Those are ones that I, I, I think will be fun to talk about. Um, and we'll see where it goes. There's, you know, there's some guys out there within our community who are heavily involved in beer, in the beer scene. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, so that'll be fun. And then, um, the other one that I would say is probably up there on my list would probably be talking to, uh, the veteran dads, um, dads who oh, are yeah. our military veterans that are in the group. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they, you know, there's, there, there, that's such a, a niche group of guys and, mm -hmm. I think they come with a whole lot of like stories and experiences, both, you know, in the battlefield and then also in the trenches as a stay at home dad and yeah, just yeah. how that all plays out. So I think it'll be cool to get some of those guys on because I feel like, uh, military guys, um, they're very, um, sort of pulled back like they they'll watch mm -hmm. and see what's going on and every once in a while they'll engage but for the most part like they just want to feel it seems like attached with the ability to step in and step back type of deal and I think there's probably a lot of dads that probably feel the same way but I think for them it comes from a place of what they've experienced in their military careers that kind of put them in that place of like I'm cool just to like head down I'm here but I know that if I need something, I can definitely get out there and be a part of the community and ask it because of just the, how solid the community is. And I've seen that on pretty regular occasions. So um, I'm excited to talk to those guys and just kind of yeah. see how they're doing. But yeah, I mean, we do have a long list of, of uh, different topics for sure. And I think that that's what will keep uh, people very uh, connected to you know the show for, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and I love finding the uh, the passion that people have that are that our dads. I say our dads. I don't know our our group of members in the close group, um, but our dads have. That's just you can tell. Like all of them are very passionate about their kids. All of them are very passionate about their families, and we've all got that in common. And then right right alongside that is all of these other things that they geek out about. You know, yeah. that it's just like, oh, well, I want to, and, and especially for me, very surprising was the growth of uh, beer and craft beer and to the point where it is now that it's, it's, um, it's just miles deep, basically, yeah. to what you can learn about, like you said, the history of it all, of course, but then also how it's made, where it's made, why it's made that way, and and what they do with it as far as, you know, as far as anything yeah. that has to do with it. You know, I want to say like taste and flavor and all that. I don't want to get a lot of words on that part of it because then I'll mess something up and you're like, well, I'll tell actually, you, actually, it's yeah, um, the yeah. hops or something. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you one little beer, <clears throat> a little beer sure. thing, which is kind of cool. And then we'll move on to the next topic. But basically um, here in town in Cincinnati, we've got like beer cellars that have been around forever, like catacomb type style. And mm -hmm. there's a, a brewery here in town called urban artifact. And they, <clears throat> they actually have gone into these catacombs. They've found traces of yeast from like way back in the day. And they actually made a beer called uh, missing link. And it, <laughs> and it was this super old, like, you know, recipe for this beer and stuff. So they do a lot of sours and stuff there, but it's just kind of interesting to see, like you can take an old yeast that's still like, can, you know, it's alive and resurrect mm -hmm. it into this, like, you know, living drinkable 
yeah. thing. Now and you say drinkable. Have, have you tried that stuff? I didn't get to try it because they did okay. a limited release on it and oh, I right. don't have the money for it. But the guys that I know who are in the beer scene here in town were really amazed by just the texture, the flavor, you know, just all the different aspects to it. So yeah, it's cool. pretty, it was, it was Very a cool, cool, it was a really cool story, honestly, historically and just everything. But that, like I said, I love all that history. Yeah. Yeah. I can and, I, and I love that, that you love it. And I know there are so many dads <laughs> that are going to have that same, uh, just, they'll just mesh right up to you and they'll be like, Oh, well, yeah, but did you hear that? It was, it was actually Bob so-and-so who did it when he took it out when his, you know, and, it, and obviously they're going, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna step <laughs> out for a minute. You guys keep going, you know, but, but I love that, that we all have those things that we geek out about yeah. that we just, you know, even though it's, you know, our kids again, probably are primary for every single one of us, but that thing that we have that we, Oh, you get a little free time. What do you do? Well, actually I'm going to go try a new beer. And you know, 10 years ago, it'd be like, what? Or maybe, maybe 15 years ago now, but uh, it's like, what, you're going to go try a new, what does that even yeah. mean? But it really means something. It's a lot more involved in it. And I oh, think yeah. with all the topics that we're looking at, you know, um, you know, we've mentioned like gaming, of course, but um, I don't want to, are we revealing all of them? I don't know where we're going to list them out if you don't want to list them out, but like cars, cars for me, I'm not like a huge car guy, but I love cars, you know, and there are certain mm -hmm. cars that are like, I have a dream car. I have cars that I'm just like, wow, if I could ever, you know, if I could, if I have infinite funds, I would be driving that instead of my minivan, you know, and, right. um, but you get people that are so deeply involved in it that are so layered into um, the construction of the things or the history of the things or the people that were the big movers and shakers in making this happen. You know, I'm really looking to see that kind of just, just enthusiasm uh, yeah. that hopefully we can bring it to the show too. So. Yeah, definitely. No, I, as far as cars go, I love the, <clears throat> wow, I'm having a hard time tonight. I, as far as cars go, I really um, enjoy like cars with that are involved with like movies. So like the Ford mm -hmm. versus Ferrari movie, they, movie that came out. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that was that was excellent. Like such, such a, a cool story. And also too, to find out that, um, you know, characters that were in there, um, they actually like had like the real people as part of their like consulting and, and keeping nice. it as true to form. So yeah, it's pretty, it, it, that, like that kind of stuff is always cool to me, but yeah, I could geek out on cars too. I, I mean, I grew up around car shows and grew up right near the Auburn Cord Duesenberg festival that takes mm -hmm. place every labor day. And I go up to that every once in a while. And you would just see cars that just was like one of like 50 left in the whole world. And you're like, Oh my gosh. Like, so yeah. yeah. So that's, that, so that'll be fun. Just talking about all those different topics and, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, uh, we'll get that kicked off here, um, next week with, uh, our first one, which working on lining it up. So I can't even tell you who it is right now, <laughs> uh, but it'll be fun. Um, I, I am curious though, you know, like I said, I didn't ask you at the beginning of the show, how your day was. So, so we'll, we'll end, we'll end the show with how was your day? Um, uh, well, I did have two kids that were homesick. Uh, it's allergies. I think they weren't really sick, but, um, my, uh, seven and eight year olds were, um, just the pollen is just exploded here. So the, uh, the seven-year-old had a, she was a psycho hose beast last night and was just wailing and crying and just mad and raging and just, just the wanting to hit stuff and things. And I, I'm like, oh, okay, you can have all those emotions in your room. You can't do that out here. You can do that in your room. Go right ahead. Don't do it out here. Um, which is something I've done with all the kids. It's kind of like, that's, that's great. Go do it in your room. No, you can do whatever you need. And you don't break things or hurt yourself, of course. Um, so she was feeling really bad last night. And then my eight-year-old was feeling bad yesterday, but he's always kind of a hypochondriac. So we weren't sure, but he got up this morning and he had now our home thermometer. All right. So I tested me and my daughter and my son, that's the, the two younger two. And my daughter's was 97.3. Mine was 97.6. And my son's was 98 um, or 98.1, I think. So I'm looking at it going, well, if he's hot and we're cold, I don't know, but he's a little warm. So I thought I'd just better to keep him home and gave him allergy medicine. And he was good. But, you know, it was a long day of getting back into that um uh, routine of taking care of a sick kid, even yeah. if they're not really that sick. So it was I mean, a lot of it, that, you know, but isn't it 98.6 that they're okay? I mean, 
Yeah, technically. <clears throat> so assuming that the thermometer is broken, because I doubt my daughter's I mean, I could be wrong. You, you know, there's a lot oh, of. Oh no, I, I temp out at I temp out at 97 when I go to like hmm. I'm usually 97.6 or whatever every time that I've like gone That's to the, the doctor and they checked me out or whatever. So have you had too much beer, man. What's what's going what's going on? Why, <laughs> why why is that? No, I have heard that uh, that globally human body temperatures are lowering, so that could be it. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I could have sent him to school, but at the same time. That's going to be know, cautionary. If, especially right now, the kids, I didn't want to even send the kids back at all. So I still have that laying on me. But then the school's like, we have any kind of a fever. Please keep them home for 72 hours. And I'm like, I can't do that. I don't want them that 72 hours. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's an overabundance of caution. So, but anyway, but other than that, it was great. Everything was going great. I had a lot of good conversations today. I got a lot of talk to a lot of dads about a lot of stuff coming up with the show and other things. And uh, then it's like 740 five and i'm going to come in here and and uh talk to my buddy brock and have some me time and my uh, <laughs> my middle schooler comes up and goes dad you know that animation project that i did instead of a science fair project because we're doing it virtual this year and i went yeah i'm aware of it what about it it was due monday <laughs> he's like well i didn't turn it in and nobody turned it in so they gave us until midnight tonight and I'm like, well, get it <laughs> oh done. God. What are you doing? Get it done, man. And he said, well, I, I will. Okay. And he's such an introvert, you know, and, and if something you may not, may, maybe everyone I be aware about their kids or, but with my kids, um, my, um, I was the 11 year old, he's so introverted that you never correct him in a public way. Um, if you, if he does something wrong, you, you're going to have to go and talk to him face to face and quietly. He just gets overwhelmed by the sense of having made a mistake. Mm. and just just cannot handle the fact that he's imperfect sometimes um he just won't process it well emotionally and he'll just just get stopped up and you know just almost physically you know not physically but almost emotionally constipated where he can't do anything else at this point and so i had to deal with that it's that last minute hey i got a project due tomorrow i got to do it in 15 minutes yeah. so that was a bit of a headache and with kids, I mean, I ask my kids, they'll, the younger kids, it's not a big deal because they don't have homework yet. Um, but like with my high school or middle school, I ask them every single day. It's part of our just conversation when they, when I go pick them up is, you know, how was your day? How's things? How's this or that? And then it's, do you have any homework and do you have any long-term projects that we need to be, you know, putting some work on? Cause I don't want to wait until the end to do it. And it seems like every time they're like, no, I don't have one. I got everything good. And then it's like, what is it tuesday night oops sorry dad i do actually have some long-term projects that we could have been working on for three weeks yep. so uh, other than that yeah, it was great it's a great day how about yeah. you <laughs> nothing like that that's for sure uh, <laughs> uh no my I, for me uh it's getting warmer up here so i really wanted to go running and since it since it was nice out today i mean it hit close to 70 today um, Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so I went out and I did, I put in, uh, 3.1 miles and, uh, it was, it felt good. It, it was, it was hard, but, uh, it was nice to finally get back out there and do that after many months of not. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, it's, it's a mental health release. Uh, and yes. so I, you know, I've really spoken out about that a lot through all my social media platforms and stuff, and just really trying to push people to be like, you, you've got to take care of yourself. Yes. you know, before you can take care of other people. And, um, here, here. it's, it's so important and I, I just don't want to stop that conversation. And so it's, it's good to get it out there, but yeah, I mean, for me, it, it was a pretty decent day. Honestly, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of the same things as you're trying to, you know, kind of juggle social, trying to juggle connecting with different dads and stuff, but along with that, lots of laundry and, you know, lots of, doing unloading and reloading the dishwasher and cooking and yeah I, my uh, my cooking schedule was a little off today so we were late to late to eat from normal time but made it all work but yeah i mean it's just i think you know from taking from what you're talking about and then the stuff that uh, you know i've dealt with i think the big part of it is like just taking that deep breath and not getting overly frustrated with it and be like all right like how do we push through this and mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's the thing where like our kids hopefully will see, you know, like, oh, you know, like 
I, I watched our dads, like I watched my dad, like go through a, you know, frustrating situation or whatever. Maybe I caused mm-hmm. a frustrating situation and, you know, they were able to figure out how to, to work that out. And, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was funny. Um, my wife was sitting on the couch with my son when I went out to go walk the dog and she was asking him, or, or we watched the Dante Palmer, uh, um, bit on YouTube and, uh, he was like, that was really cool. And he was like, I really like that. He's like, and she's like, why do you like that? And he's like, well, because that's just going to help me with my fatherhood. He's eight. Aww. Aww. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's awesome. And then he, uh, from there, uh, she asked him, well, what do you think the best part about being, being a, a papa is, you know, cause that's what he calls me a papa. And, and uh, he took him a little bit to figure it out. And he just like, I left and I came back and uh, my wife was like, Hey, you know, tell Papa what it is that you you said, and he, and so he was like, "Huh, what?" And she's like, "What's the best part about being a Papa?" And he goes, "Being a Papa." <laughs> that was his answer. <laughs> I was like, "Works for me." Yeah, you know, I can't argue with this logic. <laughs> nope, I can't argue with that. So yeah, it was. I mean, it was kind of nice, like to to hear that. It's always good to hear stuff like that from your kids, and um, you know, it doesn't always happen, but when it does you just kind of like all right like i'm gonna put that in here just put it in my box i've got that yep, for next keep time that for later that's right yeah that's i'll right. hold that and cherish that so yeah um that's, great. that's pretty much all i got for tonight man i i, I like i said yeah. i'm i'm looking forward to uh to our upcoming shows and we're working really hard to to put those out um we did get our first and i have to figure out how to put this into the show but we did get our first like voicemail from a listener um two weeks ago after we did the uh episode with the uh national parenting parents organization and uh this gentleman nice. had left a message just stating that you know he listened to the show and that he basically understands like you know what a lot of people are going through he himself had gone through it um but i just thought that was cool like honestly um and so um yeah keith thanks for listening to the show man thanks for uh, leaving that voicemail it was really cool um, I hope that more listeners will, will do that. Use that function and, and, and anchor and leave us uh, leave us a voicemail because yeah. depending on what it is, like, I'd love to be able to figure out how to put those into the show. And uh, I might actually just take the clip itself and just put it at the end of this episode for people to listen to. Um, I need mm-hmm. to listen to it again, see how, how that would work. But yeah, I, I love it. We just need to get, I, I love interacting with listeners and I hope that more of them will do it. Yeah. If, if nobody listening can tell, we love to talk to people. Yeah. So yeah, if you could, uh, if you could just add to that, because Brock and I are like wearing each other's ears out at this point. (laughs) Oh man. You sure? (laughs) All right. Well, Hey, uh, y'all have a good uh, day. I hope that you have a great week and uh, we'll uh, see you back here again uh, next week with uh, more fun stuff to talk about. I'm a dad. That's what I do. 